All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to solve, sort of show you a very neat property of Laplace's equation. Namely, if you take a solution and you rotate it, it still becomes a solution. And it's an amazing property which actually helps us solve Laplace's equation. So let me set up some notation. So remember from linear algebra, if you have coordinate axes, x and y, then you can rotate them and get an explicit formula for that. So suppose you take the axes x and y and you rotate them by an angle of theta. And here theta is fixed. Then you get new axes, x prime and y prime. And from linear algebra, as I said, we do have an explicit formula. So let theta be fixed. and define x prime and y prime as follows. So x prime and y prime equals something times x and y. And I did make a video on that. So the formula is here cosine theta, sine of theta. And then you just differentiate minus sine of theta and cosine theta. So define x prime and y prime as follows. So again, explicitly, it becomes x prime becomes cosine of theta x minus sine of theta y. And y prime equals sine of theta x plus cosine theta y. Then I'm claiming with this new change of variables, the Laplacian becomes the same. So claim, if you take u x prime x prime plus u y prime y prime, it's the same as the original Laplacian, u x x plus u y y. In other words, another way of writing this Laplacian with respect to x prime y prime of u, it's the same thing as the Laplacian of x y with respect to u. In particular, if u solves Laplace's equation, this equals zero, then u solves Laplace's equation also in the new variables. And as I said, it's very nice. This is what helps us solve Laplace's equation. But for today, let's just prove it. And it's just me flexing with the Chen Lu, basically. So proof. Okay. Basically, what you want to do, start with this and then end up getting this. So ux, it's uh, partial u, partial x. And what this is, you see u depends on x prime and y prime, so it's partial u over partial x prime, partial x prime over partial x, plus partial u over partial y prime, partial y prime over partial x. So here's what's happening. U depends on uh, if you're on x prime and y prime, and it depends on x and y. And you just follow the ones that said x. So you x prime, partial x prime, partial x, and you y prime, partial y prime, partial x. Now, this becomes u x prime. And now x prime, remember, it's cosine theta x minus sine of theta y. And now we want this with respect to x. And then plus uy prime, and then partial y prime, partial x. So sine of theta uh, x plus cosine theta y with respect to x. And remember, very important for this video, here, uh, theta does not depend on x. In the next video, it will. So here it's actually easy. So what we get is just, this just becomes cosine theta. So cosine theta ux prime. And then here we become sine of theta. Plus sine of theta ui prime. So, we did this once, so ux becomes that. Now, we need to do this again. So let's call 
to calculate u x x, u dos x is basically um, then we get u x x again that becomes u x x and essentially if you want that's partial u x over partial x which becomes partial u x over partial x prime partial x prime over partial x plus partial u x over partial y prime partial y prime over partial x But now remember we know what ux is. That becomes, so partial cosine theta ux prime plus sine theta ui prime. All this with respect to x prime. Partial x prime over partial x. We already found this. That was just cosine theta. And then same thing, partial again cosine theta ux prime plus sine theta ui prime over partial uh, y prime and then partial y prime over partial x was just sine of theta okay and then remember theta is fixed so that was nice so that becomes cosine theta ux prime x prime plus sine theta if one ui prime x prime which is in this case ux prime y prime all this times cosine theta and then plus again cosine theta for ux prime y prime and then plus sine of theta u y prime y prime all this times sine of theta and you get something interesting so cosine squared theta u x prime x prime and then sine theta cosine theta which is the same thing as sine cosine theta sine theta so plus two cosine theta sine theta u x prime y prime plus sine squared theta ui prime y prime so this is uxx uxx is this and the nice thing is I mean by the way it's a very ugly formula right but luckily if you do uyy with the exact same process you actually get something pretty similar so let me rewrite this to so uxx is cosine squared theta u x prime x prime plus 2 cosine theta sine of theta u x prime y prime plus sine squared theta u y prime y prime it turns out if you do the same thing with u y y you get sine squared theta u x prime x prime I think minus 2 cosine theta sine of theta u x prime y prime and then plus cosine squared theta u y prime y prime and here's the thing if you add both of those up u x x plus u y y you get cosine squared plus sine squared which is 1 times u x prime x prime The sum of the two, which is, just cancels out, boom, boom, and sine squared plus cosine squared, which becomes one, and you get u y prime y prime. Ta-da! Okay, so, beautiful, huh? Again, that's why I love PDEs. You have messy calculations, which most of the time simplify except for my research it just becomes messy but at least in introductory courses it's nice also you may ask what's the analog in higher dimensions 
Well, the analog of polar coordinates, at least this transformation in higher dimensions, it's the, with the orthogonal matrix. Namely, if you define the vector x prime to be O of x, where O is orthogonal, so O transpose O equals to the identity, then it turns out the Laplacian of U in the x prime variables equals to the Laplacian of U in the original variables. And the proof is basically the same, except it's going to have a bunch of indices, it becomes messy, but it's kind of the same idea. And what I wanted to say is, okay, another thing is, we know that now solutions are invariant under rotations, meaning if you rotate a solution, it still becomes a solution of Laplace's equation. And therefore, in the next video, we will see it might be useful to look for radial solutions, just ones that depend on R, if you want, in polar coordinates. Not every solution is of this form. For instance, you can check that uxy equals y squared minus x squared is a solution of Laplace's equation. This solution is not radial. It doesn't just depend on R. All that we're saying is, if you express Y and X in terms of X prime and Y prime, and take the Laplacian with respect to the new variables, it still solves Laplace's equation. We're not saying that solutions have to be radial. But again, in the next video, we'll see that this will suggest us to look for radial solutions. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.